Good afternoon, science. Good afternoon. Welcome to our healing class. We're love coming over here on Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. And uh, study about healing. Something about, you know, when you study about healing, you, you learn so much about yourself. Amen. And what we've been doing, we've been going through the book of Mark. And uh, our main text has been Mark 1, 14 and 15. And what it says, it says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus wants us to repent. Repentance has a lot to do with healing. You know, uh, about, you know, whether you're forgiving somebody who has done something for you, if you're carrying, you know, a grudge against somebody. Uh, the scripture says it all do the word of God that if, if you don't forgive people their trespasses, neither will the Lord forgive you your trespasses. And people don't like that scripture. They try to explain it away. But what God's word is, is what it is. And if you follow his word, you can't go wrong. I mean, you know, a lot of people like to add to his word and like to take away from his word. But what we try to do is go through the scripture verse by verse and expound it using other scriptures. Amen. That's how we explain this word using other scriptures because what he says in one scripture, there are two or three other witnesses, four or five sometimes, saying the same thing, right? Amen. So um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity you give us to come over here and teach your word and uh, to learn more about your word. And we pray that you will give us more revelation and give your saints more revelation. And we pray that you will be stretch out your hand here tonight to heal and that signs and wonders might be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Amen. We pray, amen. Because it isn't what we can do, it's what God can do. Amen. Well, you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they look at man, you know, when they... Uh, come over here or they go to any other ministry that the land of some man's hands on you is supposed to heal you and then when nothing happens they say that that healing stuff don't work no that ain't what it's about the land hands on people or anointing them with oil uh, James said it's the prayer of faith amen that will heal the sick now, let's look at here, uh, Mark, the second chapter tonight. Because we're going through this book of Mark. And, you know, looking at these healings and, uh, you know, taking a detailed look. Because a lot of times, you know, I tell my saints to read a chapter every day, five days a week as a minimum, so that they'll be pretty much prepared on uh, what I'm going to say. Because a lot of times I notice I'll, I'll quote a scripture and they'll say, where is that? And I'll tell them where it is. And they say, well, you got to give me time to get there. But, you know, usually when, you're, when I'm teaching, what I will do, uh, sometimes I make mistakes. I'll give the wrong scripture. But what I do, I give the scripture so you can write it down. Because everything that we try to get in in this, we usually use, use teach for 45 minutes. Because a lot of people, they can't, uh, a lot of people can't even stand uh, 15 or 20 minutes of some kind of teaching. You know, we live in a generation of uh, different groups of people. <laughs> and uh, some groups, of, I know with these younger people, they don't have the patience to listen to what anybody's got to say mm -hmm. for any length of time. And, you know, I... It really, it, it hurts me because you see so many of them perishing at a young age. Amen? Because they, they won't listen to nobody. Amen? So here in the second chapter of Mark, amen, starting at the first verse. Now this is also found in Luke, the ninth chapter, verses 2 through 8. This, uh, they recorded in uh, Luke. 
I mean, excuse me, in Matthew. This is recorded in Matthew, the ninth chapter, 2 through 8. And then in Luke, the fifth chapter, verses 15 to 25. Now it says here in Mark 2 1, and again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many came together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word unto them. Now, Matt, I mean Luke says, Luke 5, 17, it says, Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. It's the same way when we're teaching on, on healing. The power of the Lord is available to heal you if you believe and receive what we're saying. Amen? Now, people have a big problem with receiving God's word. This is, <laughs> it's, it's a known fact. Uh, here's what Jesus said in the fourth chapter of Mark. It says, in the first verse, it says, Again, he began to teach by the sea, and great multitudes gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. And he taught them many parables, many things by parables, and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds and of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprung up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. But other seed fell on good ground, and it yielded a crop that sprung up, increased, and produced some thirty-four, 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 and sixty, and a hundred fold. And he said to them, He who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Now he told this parable because Jesus knew that he was dealing with a multitude of people. That's kind of like what we're dealing with when we're uh, teaching over the internet. We're dealing with a multitude of people. And you know, a lot of people are going to hear what we're saying, but nothing's going to happen. Out of these uh, four groups of people, only one group of people received what he, he had. Now, I'm not going to go all into, you know, how Jesus explained it, but when you get a minute, you can go uh, to uh, Luke, uh, I mean Mark uh, 4, 10 through 20, and it explains what Jesus is talking about. Amen. But he did say something here in the 10th verse. Um, he said, but when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all these things are done in parables. You know, that's one of the first things that you should do is make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Amen? Amen. Yes, Let's look at the third verse in uh, Mark, the second chapter here. Mark 2, verse 3 says, 
Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when he, so when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw the paralytic, when no, it says when he saw their faith. When he saw their faith. Mm -hmm. Can Jesus see faith? Yeah, by your faith? It says, verse 5, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Bless his holy name. Mm -hmm. When he saw their faith. Faith is important to, to God. And he knows if you have faith. Jesus said he saw their face. Said, well, what were they doing? These four men were helping a man who was paralyzed to bring him to Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. And when they couldn't get through the door, I mean, everybody was there. I mean, the Pharisees and the scribes and everybody, you know, it was, it was packed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they looked up. Said, well, you know, ain't nobody on the roof. Okay. So they tore up the roof and led him down in the midst where Jesus was. And when Jesus saw their faith, now it takes faith for all four men and plus the paralytic man to, for, for him to even be let down on his bed. They even get on the roof. You know, they had to you know, get him up on there, you know, haste him up on there. And then once they got him up on there, they had to make sure he was secure in his bed, in his bed or pallet or whatever he was in. Matt, and then they let him down. And Jesus said, you know, hey, that's, he saw their faith. Right. And see, a lot of people, uh, this is one thing I that's believe that's right. holding them back from getting healed. They are not coming to Jesus in faith. Or God. Mm -hmm. and, and there has to be an action behind it. And that's what it is. Doing something. Actively mm -hmm. doing something. James 2.18 says, But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Mm -hmm. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. Mm -hmm. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the devil, demons believe mm -hmm. and tremble. But do you want to know, now listen to this old foolish man, that faith without works is dead. That's right. If you're not doing nothing, not doing nothing. your faith is dead. Mm -hmm. If there's no score following action, mm -hmm. and how did you put it? Active faith. Mm -hmm. It's an act doing it. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? Mm -hmm. And by works, faith was made perfect. Now, you know what happened in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, that Abraham laid his own son on the altar. He's getting ready to sacrifice the wood burning everything. Right, it says in Genesis 22, 12, and he said, this is uh, when he had a son on the altar, God was talking to him. You know, he, he saw that he had faith because he was doing what he told him to do. And he said in the 12th verse, and he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Only son. Now we knew he had another son. Uh, not by, uh, not but by, it wasn't by Sarah. Not by the priest. He had a uh, son by uh, Hagar, the handmaid, mm -hmm. Ishmael. Mm -hmm. But God said, "This is your only son," mm -hmm. and He told him that you know, see, you know, a lot of times God can't heal you because you're not making no effort to even come to healing class. Right. We talked about that last week. You got to be able to hear something. 
in order to be healed. It, why you got to hear something? Because you got to get your faith built up. Right. You, if you don't have no faith to be healed, you're not going to get healed. And we're going to find this out, I think, in the book of uh, Mark, that it was always according to their faith that they got healed. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now we also see, he says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Now, it reminds me of something when Hezekiah was sick and the prophet came to him and told him, you know, uh, get your house in order because you're going to die. Amen. Right. And he turned his face to the wall right. and prayed. Mm -hmm. And right. he right. prayed right. so hard that before the prophet got across the courtyard, God told him to go back and tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Mm -hmm. And then he told him, you know, uh, take this herb and lay on his balls and he'll be healed. But something uh, uh, in Isaiah, it records that, it records in the, you know, King, the book of Kings too, and in Chronicles. But in Isaiah 38, 20, it said, the Lord was ready to save me. Mm -hmm. Is the Lord always ready to save me? All the yes. Time. All the time. Because here tonight, the power of the Lord is present to heal you. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's, he's right here. He's always ready to heal you. He's always ready to save you. In Psalm 103, verse 3, it says, Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. That's what the psalmist said. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, you know, that's the chapter that talks about the Lord's Supper and what you shouldn't be doing. You know, taking the Lord's Supper, you should have yourself right. Before you take the Lord's Supper, it's just not some kind of a ritual that you do right. and um, all of that. Now, verse uh, 30 says, For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. That's what this verse says. But if you go to verse uh, 27, you get a better understanding. This is uh, when he's telling us to examine ourselves. See, a lot of times what we want to do, we want to check on what everybody else is doing, what they're not doing right, and what they're doing wrong, and we're judging everybody else, but you're not examining yourself. And he says here in verse 27, Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. Amen? And so let him eat of this bread and drink of this cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's path. And then he says, For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. Why did you say that, Brother Carter? Because it falls right along with what we're going to read, read next. Now, in James, the fifth chapter, 15 verses says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now, this man was a paralytic. <coughs> and something happened in his life while he became paralyzed. Amen? I don't believe he was born paralyzed. I didn't say. It didn't say he was born paralyzed. So something must have happened. And you know, sin will cause something to happen to you. Oh, you didn't say. Well, it will this cause you to lose your life if you're not careful. You to get a Amen. So what Jesus, the first thing he told this man, your sins are forgiven. You, you have to know that when you come to Jesus, that your sins have been forgiven. You have to know that he died for your sins, according to the scriptures, and was buried and rose the third day, according to the scriptures. You have to know this for yourself that he died for all your sins, and the blood of Jesus Christ washed away all your sins. You should have no sin conscience or, or, 
or nothing about whether you are forgiven or not. And this is what Jesus told this man, your sins are forgiven. Now here in Mark, the second chapter, verse 6, it says, And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Can I tell you that's what people be doing is judging you instead of examining themselves? They're sitting back there. I mean, the power of the Lord is there to heal everybody, you know, and they're sitting back and uh, reasoning in their hearts. Now, the psalmist wrote in Psalm 139, verse 2, You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts are far off. That's God. He knows you. Amen. He understands what's going through your mind. He knows your very motives. It tells you that in uh, Hebrews 4.12 that the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. You know, if you're sitting back there and you're reasoning something in your mind about somebody, and you're judging them, you, you know what I mean? When we are telling people that, hey, your sins can't be forgiven, you can't be healed, and you're sitting back and reasoning in your heart, well, how can they say that you know, because we're saying the same thing that God is saying. Right. This is what he says in his scriptures. We're standing on the word of God. Mm -hmm. This is not something that I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This is what God is saying. And see, when you put God first in your life, you can have boldness right. to speak his word boldly. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and you don't have to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen? Amen? Because you know it is the power of God unto salvation for whoever believes. And see, people need to know this, that their sins can be forgiven. Amen. Now, in the seventh verse of Mark, the second chapter, there, remember, these, these people are reasoning in their hearts, square scribes and all of that. And it says, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Mm -hmm. That is true. The only person that can forgive sins is God. Jesus was God and is God, but while he was on earth, he put all that to the side. Mm -hmm. Amen? And God gave him power that he could forgive people for their sins. Amen? Because we're, he wouldn't have said this unless he heard his father say this. That's right. Amen? And it says in Psalm uh, 130, verse 4, But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be fear. God is always ready to forgive you. Even, you know, even as a guy do that, that God is ready to save you. Amen? Isaiah 43, verse 25 says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. That is powerful that he don't even remember your sins no more. And he tells you that in Hebrews. Amen? Hebrews 8th chapter and Hebrews 10th chapter that God when once he forgives you of your sins, he don't remember your sins no more. Amen. Other people may be sitting back, you know, reasoning in their heart and judging you and all of this, but not God. Now, in um, Acts, the second chapter, the 38th verse, after Peter preached that powerful message on the day of Pentecost, when they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. It says in the 38th verse, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
See, a lot of people don't realize that. When, when you repent, right? You got to repent. That's right. Even Jesus said that in uh, Mark, the first chapter, the 15th verse, he said, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Repent means to change your inner self. Your old way of thinking, regret past sins, live your life in a way that proves repentance. Don't keep living the same way. Seek God's purpose for your life. You repent. And when you do that, your sins are forgiven, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now it says here, just to let you know that Jesus was in um, a man's form when he was here on earth. It says in the 8th verse, but immediately when Jesus perceived in his heart that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? <laughs> why do we reason out all this stuff in our heart, even about, you know, all preachers? I mean, preachers can be telling you the truth, right. how you can get healed, how you can get saved, how you can get prosperous. Amen. And what you want to do is sit back and judge them and put them in a category different than you. The Bible says that there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. And another thing that the Bible um, points out that we are all brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Now some of us he lets us be apostles. Some evangelists, some prophets, some pastors and teachers. But we're all going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. You know what I mean? So if you're sitting back judging somebody else to say, you know, well, they shouldn't have all this. They shouldn't have all this money. They shouldn't be doing all this with their money. You're judging them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You don't know what they're doing with all their money. They, they could be a, a, a tither and a, a big off, give, giving right. big offerings. They could be helping a multitude of people. Right. Amen? It says in Hebrews 4.13, And there is no creature hidden from his sight. That's right. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him of whom we must give account. That's right. How do you give account? That's what I you have to be thinking yeah. about. Not what somebody else is doing. Not sitting back and judging somebody else and going through all of that. Tell yeah. the truth. Don't worry about their own self. Now, mm -hmm. in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, it says in 26th verse, the thoughts of the wicked are in an abomination to the Lord. But the words of the peer are pleasant. Mm -hmm. Amen. So here's what Jesus says in Mark 2, 9, uh, 2 verse 9. He says, which is easier? Who is Jesus comparing what about which is easier? To say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. He's saying, if it's easy to, is it easy to do that? Which of them is easier? To say your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise and take up your bed and walk. Which one of them is easier for Jesus or God? For God, both of them are easy. He can forgive you for all your sins and He can heal you too. And see, this is where we've been missing it as Christians. We don't preach this enough. That when a person comes to the altar and they're ready to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and, and uh, we don't tell them that you can be forgiven of your uh, sins and also you can be healed. Yeah. Because most of them, when they got there, they have some kind of illness. I mean, you see this in your daily walk in life. And my wife talked about this Sunday, you know, a lot of people, when they get up in age, they have uh, illnesses. Mm -hmm. 
they are sick. And, and one thing about um, when you're sick, you still have to be like this paralytic. If you can't make it to church, you gotta help have somebody help you get to church. That's 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 uh, using your faith to get to the word of God. But you know, one thing that God has did in the time period we live in right now, He has got a worldwide web full of preachers. Amen. Amen. And, and, and you can be uh, bedridden, you can be at home. And, and you can be meditating on his words. You can be following the scriptures with that preacher. And, and, and when the preacher prays the, the prayer of faith for you to be healed, you can be healed right there. Because just like the power of the Lord was there with, when Jesus was uh, teaching, amen? amen? The power of the Lord was there the same way the power of the Lord is present here tonight. Right. He's near. He's near to you. I mean, it's, it's so close to you. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it, <laughs> it's, very it's in your mouth and in your heart. So he's never if gone. you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you can be forgiven of your sins mm -hmm. and you can be healed of, of all your uh, diseases. Makes sense today. Right now, to wait till the by the sound of my voice, mm -hmm. Amen. You can be healed, and to Je that's why Jesus said, "Which is easier?" Mm -hmm. And then He said, verse ten, "But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins." Mm -hmm. He said to the paralytic, "Arise, mm -hmm. take up your bed, and go home." Okay. Get up and walk. You see how powerful God's word is? Mm -hmm. and, and what makes God's word powerful is the one that's speaking it, that believes it. And it's the truth. <laughs> His word. You believe yeah, what God that. said is true, and you're telling somebody else that this is the truth. And if they try to say, well, that ain't, that, you can get to God all kinds of ways, you tell them, no, you cannot. You can't get to God all kinds of ways. You can't get your healing just through science and medicine. Mm -mm. Amen? You have to have the power of God to get your sins forgiven Amen. and to be healed. It all comes from the power of God. The word of God Amen. And that's why it says in James 5.15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Well, that means, well, wait, I, I can pray, well, God, I can pray, well, uh, I have heard people pray like this, Lord, we're praying for sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, and we pray that you will heal them, but not our will, your will be done. That is not a prayer of faith. Well, that's the way Jesus prayed. Yeah, but Jesus prayed other ways, too. Now, we saw that in uh, John the 11th chapter when he raised Lazarus from the dead. He told him, you know, come forward. Mm -hmm. come forward. Amen. You really got to get your mind renewed and see uh, what, hap what is happening. Religion has made Christians weak. The saints are really weak Amen. when it comes to being healed by the power of God. There shouldn't be no saint running around here with no illness. And what a lot of saints I've heard say, it. well, you know, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Well, what about Job? Mm -hmm. They know more about Job's sickness and more about Paul's thorn in the flesh than they do about Hillary. Right. One thing about Paul's thorn in the flesh, it wasn't about no sickness. No. His thorn in the flesh were the Judaizers right. persecuting him. Right. Check it out for yourself. This is why I said right. you got to read they, the Bible they, for they yourself. Was of bad about it. They were always going to be there. Always. So, and they with us now too. That's they why he said, uh, my, when I am weak, I am strong. Mm -hmm. Because your grace it makes me strong. It's sufficient. It's, you know, more than enough. The grace right. that God has given us is more than enough. And we looked at that... Uh, because we have our confidence in him. Saturday, 
But you will suffer persecution. All right. But, you know, if, if you do, if you leave everything for the kingdom of God, and, and you're sown into the kingdom of God, he said that you will reap a hundredfold in this life. Amen. That's right. With persecution. And eternal life in the life to come. I mean, how can you think that? Amen. But this is why people fight so hard against healing. They fight against prosperity. They fight against being filled with the Spirit. And, and, and then they want to persecute the ones that are preaching it and teaching it. And they say it. Amen. They want to persecute them. But here's what Jesus said. All that word is the truth of God. And they've been hostile toward God when they arguing about it. Well, they think they're arguing with the different ministers, but, but they they're actually to. arguing against God. God. And you should never They're against fighting his, his against word. God. He said, my word is here for Even in, in, uh, if you look in the book of Acts, when uh, Peter and John, you know, um, got that man healed in the name of Jesus, they used the name of Jesus for right. him to be healed. They said that they didn't, you know, it wasn't because of them, it was because of the name of they Jesus. Didn't want to use this. That they to took, brought them, uh, put them on the, you know, brought them to the Pharisees and all that, and the right. scribes, and right. they wanted to beat them. They wanted to beat them. But even and one of the Pharisees named Gamaliel stood up and said, wait a minute. <laughs> if this is of God, we can't fight against it. Right. Even they had sense enough to know that. Then not to even want to do that. To let them alone. Right. But in this the generation that we're living in, these people don't even have sense enough to let the, uh, God's people alone. And the more they, they try to persecute God's people, it's always uh, they come up with, I don't know why this coronavirus is out here. Came from China or something. Right. I don't even know where this monkeypox is coming in. You know, I had to go to the doctor just last week, and he told me I had cancer. They don't know why these things are happening to them, because one big reason is why they're happening to them, because they won't let God's people alone. Right. And they're, they're walking around here in bitterness and all of that, and hateful. unbelief and, yeah. and hateful, and, and just fighting against God. Right. And the more harder they fight against God, the more they are perishing. Right. That's what I see happening. We see it happening just in this, um, where our studio office is. That the more people fight against this ministry, we look up and they're not here no more. Right, because it's an evil thing to do. We have right seen this. God. In our <laughs> lifetime, that people have been fighting against what we've been doing. Yeah, I mean, oh, because we, we sow into God's kingdom, mm -hmm. we minister in God's kingdom, we minister to the saints. If the saints need something, they know they can get it from us. Right. They may can't get it from a church or anywhere else, but they, we can, they can get it from us. Yes. And then when we give it to them, somebody sitting back and talking about, don't they know that they just a dope addict? Right. Don't they know that they just an alcoholic? Right. That's judging people. That's judging. You need to judge yourself. I'm not here to judge anybody. God said that the poor you're going to have what you are with. That's right. Amen. And they're going to need somebody to help them. Right. And see, this is why um, I know God's been so good to us and he's fostered us so much because we give so much. Right. If somebody asks you for something, we just give it to them. Right. And we let them know that I might need your help on down the line, you know, to do something. And they'll, they'll ask, you know, what can I do for you? You know, I just don't want to just take this without doing that. And I said, well, you know, I got a whole list of things that I need done, and I'm going to contact you when I need something done. Amen? But I'm not holding that against them on no. whether I'm going to give them something or not. You're not supposed to take it That's what Amen? You're supposed to freely give, and freely you will receive. Amen. And it also says, judge not, and you will not be judged. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of times, I had learned this for myself, but uh, here lately, a lot of times I wanted to say something. 
And every time I looked in the Word of God, He told me, don't, 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 say, say, a don't word. say a word. You pray for your enemies. Right. Amen. That's right. That's what He said. You pray for the ones that persecute you. Mm -hmm. You know, He tells you this all through the Word of God. That's right. That you were supposed to not uh, give uh, evil for evil. That's right. Not we're not supposed to be doing that. But yet, uh, people are doing it. It says here in Romans, the 12th chapter, the 20th verse, it says, uh, well, let me give you the 19th verse. It says, Beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, That's right. says the Lord. That's right. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. That's right. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Right. Do not be overcome by evil, mm -hmm. but overcome evil with good. I wish people could get a hold of this in the world we live in because as soon as something happens, they're ready to, to kill somebody. They do. They be ready to kill And then a lot of times with our um, people in, that are supposed to be protecting us, our police force, they they're ready to that. shoot you the minute they open the door. No questions asked. They just ready to pull out their gun and shoot you. Really but yet a person can have all kinds of um, high power rifles and, and, and weapons and, and they are of a different color. Mm -hmm. They want to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Now, it is no secret that this world that we live in, people of color have always had to go through persecution. That's true. And you know, if you look back in the Bible and you really study the Bible and you really study what was going on when Jesus was walking the earth, you'll find out that Jesus was a person of color. That's right. It wasn't just because he was the son of God right. that they were persecuting him. He was a person of color, and he hung out with people of color. He hung out with the sinners and, and, and the publicans and all of that, and they always were mad at him. And right now, he's telling them in here in Mark that this man's sins are forgiven. That's right. And to take up your bed and walk. In verse 12 of this second chapter of Mark, he says, immediately he rose. Mm -hmm. he immediately. Took up his bed and went out in the presence of them all. That's right. So that they were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Never seen like and see, this is what God wants to show off in somebody's life, um, these things, and in someone's ministry, that when you pray the prayer of faith for somebody, and that person knows that they've been forgiven of their sins, and you anoint them with oil, and lay your hands on them, and pray the prayer of faith, that immediately they're going to be healed. That's right. And why? Because God is stretching out his hand to heal people. That's right. He hasn't changed. He still heals people today. When people are missing this healing by their ignorance and unbelief. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are missing it because they have a hard heart That's of true. unbelief. They, they know all these scriptures and all this stuff, but they refuse to receive it. And, and what they're doing, they're stopping other people from receiving it too. Reading the man of sin. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, when they go back to their church and they be asking them about the, their pastor about these healing scriptures and what they may have heard on the internet, they say, well, sometime God will heal you. Sometime he won't. You never know what God is going to do. You know, you don't need to stop that stuff. When it's plainly and clearly written in his word that he forgives you of all your sins and he heals you of all your diseases. That's right. God, God is unchangeable. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're going to keep preaching this. We're going to keep working through the book of Mark. And more things are going to be revealed to you. 
Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Jesus said in uh, Luke, the fifth chapter, they came to him to hear and to be healed. Amen. We'll catch you next week. Y'all have a good one. Well, I will see you uh, Thursday. My wife will be here Thursday. Amen. Y'all have a good day. God bless you.